Alright, now that we've seen propositional functions in the previous video, let us see how we can use quantification with propositional functions. Now the idea behind it is that, uh, uh, behind the quantification is that a propositional function p of x can take many forms depending on the values of x. So uh, this, this proposition function here can be p of x1 uh, for the instance when the value of x is x1. It can also be p of um, x2 um, and, and so on. So we need a way to um, to find out the truth value of uh, this whole propositional function based on specific values uh, that uh, the, the, the variable takes. So, the first tool for quantification is the universal quantifier. Uh, according to the definition, universal quantifier or, universe, or the universal quantification of p of x is the statement p of x for all values of x in the domain. Now, <clears throat> the notation is given as this over here. Let me rewrite the notation. So basically this uh, symbol means for all or for every. Um, uh, basically we have to, uh, we, we mention the variable after this and then the propositional function uh, follows that. Now, uh, keep in mind that whenever we are quantifying a, uh, um, uh, a propositional function using this quantifier, the universal quantifier, uh, we need to specify the domain uh, of the, uh, the variable x, which is, uh, which is very important because unless we define the domain of the variable, we will not be able to find out what is the value uh, the truth value of the the propositional function uh, that we are looking at. Notice here that uh, at the end of the day we are interested in the truth value of this whole statement uh, uh, the quantified statement that we have. So if I just uh, get rid of this part here just bear with me a little. Okay, now um, Basically, we want to, uh, uh, through quantifying, we want to make sure, or we want to find out, uh, rather, uh, whether the truth value of this whole entire statement is true or false. So, in uh, in essence, the true the statement, the whole statement, the whole quantified statement is going to be true, if this propositional function is true for each and every specific value of x. So basically what we are saying is that p for, for every x, p of x is equivalent to p of x1 and p of x2 and p of xn if our domain let me write over here, if the domain of x is the values x1, x2 until xn. So basically the, um, uh, as we have seen from section 1.1 1 .1, that this whole statement is going to be true if each and every um, uh, statement is true. So if you have true here, true here, true here, until the last one, if all of them are true, then and only then the entire statement is going to be true. Now, to see this in action, let's take this example. This example says, let p of x be the statement that x plus 1 is greater than x. The question says, what is the truth value of this quantification for every x p x? So this is the quantification we're looking for where the domain consists of all real numbers. So let me rewrite that down. So p of x is the statement x plus 1 greater than x and our domain is um, our domain is the real number. So the question is 
for every x, p of x, is it true or is it false? That's what we want to know. We want to find out the truth value. Now, notice here, no matter what the value of x is, basically what we're trying to say is we're trying to say for every x, we want to say that x plus 1 is greater than x, which is, of course, true. Choose any number from the real, uh, the real number set, and if you add 1 to it, it's going to be greater than itself. So, for this specific case, or for this specific example, the answer is true. So we can say, for every x, p of x is equivalent to true. Now take another example to demonstrate the quantification. Look at this example 9. It says, let q of x be the statement that x is less than 2. The question is asking, what is the truth value of the quantification for every x q of x, where the domain consists of all real numbers? So let me rewrite this question. q of x is the statement that x is less than 2, and our domain is the set of real numbers. Now, for our quantification, basically, we're asking the questions, for every x, um, q of x, what is the truth value for every x, q of x? This can be written as, for every x, we're asking the question, is x is less than 2? And x is coming from the domain r, the real numbers. Now, although this is true for all values less than 2, it's not true for, all, for other values which are greater than 2. So this means that uh, if we, if we uh, arrange the real numbers as so in the real, on, the, on the real number line, at 2, anything, any value less than 2, the, uh, the, 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 the value of q of x is going to be true. Any value taken from the right side of 2, the value of q of x is going to be false. So, basically, because we have some values which are turning this, uh, this statement to false, the entire, therefore, let me write over here, therefore, the entire q of x is going to be false. The entire statement, the entire quantified statement here is going to be false. Let's go to this next example and see how quantification works. Now this example is saying suppose that p of x is x squared greater than 0. Now we want to show that for every x p of x is false uh, keeping in mind that the universe of discourse consists of all integers. So basically in this case we're saying that p of x, let me rewrite it, x squared greater than 0 and our domain domain is all integers. Now, the thing is that uh, when you first look at this example, or this question, you might think that this is true, but if you look at the value of 0, when x is equal to 0, so basically we're looking at p of 0, that is, when x is equal to 0, then we have p of x, p of 0, is the statement um, um, uh, 0 square is greater than 0, which turns out to be false. So the whole quantification of for every x, p of x is going to turn into false. The next example will, uh, will give us a, a better uh, picture when we are working with finite domain. So the question says, what is the truth value of for every x, p x uh, where px is the statement x is square less than 10 and the domain consists of the positive integers not exceeding 4. So let me rewrite it p of x is p of x is the statement x is square less than 10 and our domain is just four numbers, right? Positive integers not exceeding 4. So 1 is the positive integer 2, 3, and 4. So this is the only, these are the only four elements in our domain. So the quantification for every x, p of x, basically means p of 1 and p of 2 and p of 3 and p of 4. Basically it means the, the truth value of this. Now the truth value, let me uh, um, substitute 1 for the x, so we'll have 
1 square is less than 10. This is the first. And uh, the set for the second one, it's 2 squared less than 10. And for the third one, it's 3 squared less than 10. And for the fourth one, that's 4 squared less than 10. Now, as you can see, that this turns into true. This also turns into true. This also turns into true. But this turns into false. And uh, because one term of this whole compound statement, logical statement, is false, uh, which is uh, stuck together using the AND um, uh, operators, this means that the whole quantification is false. So, we can conclude from here that for every x, p of x is false. Now, while we're studying quantification, uh, translation is very important as well. Look at this example. It says, what does the statement for every x, n of x, mean if n of x is the statement computer x is connected to the network and the domain consists of all computers on campus? So basically, um, for every x, n of x means, and now we need, what you need to do is need to translate this into normal English or proper English. So basically we're saying every this means that every uh, x x is by the way is a computer so every computer okay uh, now this computer x is in the domain and the domain is computers on campus so in the translation we'll say every computer on campus and this is the substitution for x over here okay continuing with the translation uh, it means uh, we, we say that every computer on campus is connected to the network. So um, in uh, uh, working, working with quantification, um, finding the truth value of quantification is important, but uh, in, sometimes you need to build the skill of translating from mathematical notation into normal English uh, uh, sentences or statements and vice versa. That is also a very important skill that uh, a student needs to develop uh, while studying this, uh, this material. Now for the next example let me use some skills of, from pre-calculus uh, to determine the truth value of this quantification. Uh, let me read the question first. What the question says, what is the truth value of this quantification if the domain consists of all real numbers? Uh, so this is the first part of the question. The second part of the question is asking the same thing if the domain was integers. So let, let, let's let just cover the first part of the question. We'll come to the second part of the question later. So the first part of the question is saying for every x, x squared is greater than or equal to x. So. Now let let's let's just let's just analyze this part first, okay? So this is basically x squared greater than x, which can be rewritten as x squared minus x greater or equal to zero. So we need to look at the sign of this of this part over here. We need to look at the sign. So let me convert that into an equation first of all. So we can rewrite this as x squared minus x equals to zero and try to solve it. So this will uh, this will become x. I'll take x as a common factor. So you get x minus one equals to zero. Now basically this is an equation of, of second degree with two roots. The first root is the root number one is uh, is that x is equal to 0 and root 2 is that x is equal to 1. So now what I'm going to do is um, draw this on the real line and the first root is 0 and second root is 1. Now I'm going to look at the at the sign of x and the sine of x minus 1. So for the first sine of x uh, it's going to be positive on the right side and negative on the other side and for the x minus 1 
it's going to be positive on the right side, negative on the, the other side here. So in this case, the sine of x multiplied by x minus 1 is going to be positive here, negative here, and positive here. Now, let's go back to our original problem. The original problem says that we want to look for the sine of this part. So we want this to be uh, greater than or equal to zero. And the, uh, the statement that x, x minus, multiplied by x minus one is greater or equal to zero is true in this area and it is false in this area and true in this area. Therefore, the quantification for every x, x squared is greater than x, okay, is true in this area and in this area, but false in this area. And because our domain is, the domain is r, this whole statement comes out to be false. Now, someone might say, hey, wait a minute, you know, we could, I could have, um, if, in order to make sh uh, to test whether this is true or not, I could think of a counterexample um, from 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 the uh, from the domain itself. So in this case, if we take x to be to be half, then we'd end up with this means that we will have half squared is going to be uh, well, greater or equal to half. In this case, the statement will become 1 over 4 is greater or equal to half, which is false. And hence, we can say that for every x, x squared greater than or equal to x is false when the domain is r. And the answer is correct. This is another, so, uh, another solution uh, to determine the, uh, to determine the, um, uh, to determine the uh, truth value of this quantification. But I wanted to use the skills from pre-calculus uh, so in, in, in my discussion here just to give a more concrete uh, and a complete answer to, to this question. So now we're done with the first part of the question. Let's go and look at the second part of the question. So let me scroll up a little bit over here and let me change the, the ink that I have to red. So the, 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 the second part of the question says, um, what is the truth value of this statement if the domain consists of all integers? So the difference now is that everything stays the same, but the difference is that the domain now is the set of integers. Now, for the set of integers, this means that Everything holds th th throughout throughout this this discussion here or this analysis. Everything holds, except that we are jumping. Okay, we are jumping from from um, integer jumps. So we're jumping from negative one to zero, and then from zero to one, and then from one to two, to say to, to two, and so on. So. So as you can see that once the once the domain is integer this part is no longer within the domain so this part is not there anymore so basically in that case the quantification is true on either on in in every in in every part of of the domain itself so we can safely come and say for the domain of integer numbers for the domain of integer numbers for every x x squared greater than or equal to x is true. 